Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy and I create videos on absolutely everything coloured pencil related. Today we're going to take a look at six different blending methods, specifically wet blending methods and products. So think solvents, blender pens, that kind of thing. The six products I've tried and compared here are Zest It Pencil Blend, the Citrus Smelling Variety, Gamsol Odorless Mineral Spirits, Finesse Coloured Pencil Blender Pen, Winsor Newton Pigment Marker, the Colourless Blender, Koi Colouring Brush Pen and finally Derwent Blender Pens. So out of the blender pens, three of them are alcohol based and one is water based and that's the Koi colouring brush pen. We're going to directly compare the results of each of these products and I'm going to talk you through exactly how I use these and how easy it is to relay a coloured pencil and all that jazz. The paper I'm using for this is the Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper in 140 pound weight, extra white. The kind of paper you use if you ever decide to do this kind of project will give you completely different results so make sure you use a paper that you tend to use a lot for your coloured pencil work. If you decide to complete this on say ordinary printer paper you're not going to get accurate results and a fair blending experience especially when using wet methods so using the correct paper is absolutely vital. Now before you add any blender to your work, it's important to make sure you have enough layers of pencil down. If you go in and blend on too few layers, the blender won't be as effective and can often leave you with patchy, inconsistent results. As you can see here, I've got six little circles for each different product and I start off by adding a load of layers of pencil down. I like to complete this sort of thing with the main type of pencil I use, which is the Faber-Castell Polychromos. So that's what I'm adding to the large circles and I'm adding three different tones, gradually getting darker as I head towards the upper right hand of the circle. I also add little swatches of my other pencils to the side. These all happen to be wax based pencils so I can see the effect of each product on those as well. Those little swatches are Caran d'Ache Luminance, Pablo, Prismacolor and Arteza Expert pencils. You don't have to have tiny little swatches off to the side either, you can create many different sheets for each kind of pencil so you can really accurately compare each of your results. For this demo though, it's easy for me to set it out like this. Once all of your layers of pencil are down, then it's time to get to the fun part and use some of those blending materials. The first one I'm using is Zest It Pencil Blend, the citrus variety. Now I've covered this product so many times on my channel, so I'm not going to go into too much depth on this one. I'll link a couple videos with a full demo down in the description for you. Basically, I apply this with a paintbrush, an Art Master Pearl size 6 to be exact, and I really load the brush, but not so that it's dripping wet, just enough to hold the bristles of the brush together. The first layer of solvent is when you want to use the most, and as you increase the amount of layers of pencil and solvent, you want to gradually decrease the amount of solvent you use with each consecutive layer. So all you do is just apply the brush to the paper and make small motions to move the solvent and the pigment around to blend to a super smooth finish. Be careful not to be too hard with the brush and don't keep going over and over the same area. If you have any patching from doing that, we can clear that up with another layer of pencil. And that's basically it. This solvent always does a fantastic job and you really can't fault it. It's super smooth and blended real nice. Next up is Gamsol Odorless Mineral Spirits. This is applied in exactly the same way as the Zest It, so just load up your brush and blend away. The only difference with this product is that it doesn't have that citrusy smell, which I actually find more appealing. The Zest It never used to have any sort of effect on me, but that citrus smell is just so overpowering for me now. Not much to say about the result from the Gamsol. It's an awesome blender and again, you can't really fault it. Now we're getting into those blender pens and first up we have the Finesse blender pen. This one is alcohol based and it has two tips. A very nice brush tip, this one's my favourite which is great for large areas. And it also has a small bullet tip which is very hard and that's great for getting into the tiny like detail areas. I prefer the brush tip and that's what I've used for this demo. 
Unlike the solvent, the pen blenders, you can't really change the amount of liquid applied to the paper. So all you do is just use this like a marker or any other drawing implement and sweep it across your work. It's good practice to work from light to dark and not the other way around. Trust me, if you've seen my old Derwent blender pen review, you'll know exactly what I mean and why it's best to work this way. Working at dark to light can create some really unappealing pigment patches, so work lightly from light to dark making sweeping motions, little circles, whatever you want and blend away. Again, be careful not to go over and over the same area, otherwise you'll end up with a blank spot. Any patching again can be fixed when we add our pencil back over. I'm going to go ahead and say this right now that I absolutely love this product. It's absolutely amazing. It blends so well, everything is so nice and smooth and the colours are almost seamless. Moving on to the Winsor & Newton pigment marker. This one again is alcohol based and like the finesse it has two tips to it. One is a big old chisel nib and the other is a little bullet nib which is similar to the one on the finesse pen. For this demo I used the chisel tip as it was a lot softer than the bullet nib and it also meant that I could work a lot quicker. To apply this I just used some broad strokes, both circular and like a general shading kind of motion and I worked from light to dark slowly blending together. I found that this product moved the pigment around so much and it also diluted the colour way too much for my liking. Compared to the other circles, this one is just so dull and you normally expect to see a liquid based blender brighten and strengthen the colour, but this did the exact opposite. Maybe I didn't use it quite right or I put too much down, I don't know, it just wasn't working like the other methods of blending. Moving on to our only water based blender, the Koi Colouring Brush Pen. This just has the one applicator, a super soft brush tip which is so nice to use. Again, I use the same motion and process of applying this product. This didn't do too bad a job, but it could have been better. It worked so well on the Arteza pencils though, which completely surprised me. It didn't do too much on the luminance and it looks like I basically went over and applied nothing. I put this down to the waxy nature of the luminance and the other wax based pencils as well. Finally we have the Derwent blender pens, there's two types here, a big bullet nib and a small bullet nib. Both have exactly the same formula within them, you just use them for different areas, much like the finesse. The small nib is great for small detailed areas and the larger is big for blending out large areas. So I've covered these before in my review and I really didn't give them a fair chance. Not only that, but my inexperience with blending meant I used them wrong, so let's correct that. I'm working with them in exactly the same way as the other pen products and this time making sure to work from light to dark and not work over the area too much. The Big Tip actually did a solid job on each of the brands of pencils. The Pablos were a little bit tricky to blend though, but this was the case with most of these methods. I always find Pablo pencils tricky to blend out, which is perhaps one of the reasons why I don't tend to use them so much. Anyway, I really like the way that this product blended in the end. It's smooth and the colours bleed into one another, so I'm happy. Now let's see how easy it is to reapply a coloured pencil. One thing to note is to let your pieces dry thoroughly before going over with any more pencils. Working over wet areas, especially with a sharp pencil, is not a good idea as you can tear your paper and destroy your work. So wait as long as you possibly can before going back in with those trusty pencils. Zest it first and all pencils reapply like a dream. It's like there's no previous layers beneath, like working on fresh paper almost. So this gets a bigger thumbs up and that goes for all of the pencil brands. The same can be said for the Gamsol, reapplying the pencil was a doddle. When applying the pencil back over you can fill in any little patchy areas that may have been created when blending and it's like they never happened. It's completely amazing, so I love these two products. What about the Finesse Blender Pen? Adding more pencil layers, again extremely easy, no issues whatsoever. 
I was able to achieve a really smooth look on the large circle and the smaller swatches layered up to almost no grain of the paper showing through. The Winsor & Newton pencil layers applied fine over the top and by adding more pencil I was able to get back that colour saturation. Seriously, what was up with making them so dull in the first place? The only issue I had here was getting a nice smooth finish but that was due to the uneven patchiness from the blending. It also wasn't as easy to layer on top of than it was for the first three methods, but I by no means struggled. The Koi colouring brush pen is the worst of the bunch, unfortunately. Being water based, I knew it wouldn't dissolve that binder and push the pigments around as much as the other methods, so layering over the top was actually quite tricky, especially with those wax based pencils. The only exception here being the Arteza pencils. For some reason this blender loves those and it's actually blended out the Arteza better than any of the other methods. Finally we have relayering over the Derwent. This was an easy job but not as easy as the first three as I found with the Winsor & Newton. I was able to achieve a fairly smooth surface when relayering though. So let's try once more with blending using the wet methods and see what happens. For all of the methods I use exactly the same process, I'm just stating this here to save from repeating myself too many times. The Zestia and the Gamsol reapplied like a freaking dream, much like I expected. I got a nice smooth even finish and I eliminated any graininess on the larger circle. The small swatches I had the same experience with, not a problem at all when blending. The finesse pen was also wonderful to work back over, it didn't pick up and move too much pigment, it just blended out everything nice and smooth, so I was really really surprised by this supply. The Winsor & Newton went down fine, but it moved everything about way too much once more and also diluted that colour again. Ugh. We're back to that uneven, patchy surface that I worked so hard to combat when layering down more pencil. The Koi brush really struggled to blend anything out when reapplied, especially on the wax based pencils. I had to apply a lot more pressure to the pen to even get anything to budge, which isn't ideal. It did work wonders on those Arteza pencils though, so I found those pencils an absolutely perfect buddy. Reapplying the Derwent blender was easy as well. It blended out okay. It wasn't really bad, but it wasn't the best either. It really started picking up pigment in some areas, but that's mainly because I spent too much time blending and reworking areas. It's a workable product though, and once you layer pencils back on top, you can easily combat any pigment or patchy issues. So, which one was my favourite? Definitely the Zestit and the Gamsol. I can't really choose between either because they did exactly the same job and the results are pretty much the same. I'm going to pick the Gamsol though, purely because the Zestit Citrus really gets up my nose and I just can't stand the smell anymore. Between the other four, hands down, it's the Finesse Blender Pen. Although when you relay a pencil it's hard to see a difference between either blending method, the Finesse was the one which I had the least issues with. It didn't pick up too much pigment and leave things super patchy and the relayering of pencils was really easy. The worst of the bunch for me has to be the Koi colouring brush pen. It was such an effort to get any blending after the second application of pencils that it really wouldn't be suitable for blending the whole way through a piece. Unless, of course, you were using Arteza Expert pencils. Man, did it do a fab job with those. I suppose it would also be good for a watercolour pencil, so maybe that's something that we will have to try it with in the future. Between the Derwent and the Winsor & Newton, there were pretty much the same. They both have their issues. I'd probably pick the Derwent over the Windsor though because I just couldn't deal with that desaturation of colour with each blending application. What do you guys think is the best blending method? Which do you like the style of the most? I'd also love to know if any of you have these supplies and how did you guys find them? Let me know in the comments below. I'd just like to state that this is purely my personal opinion based on the way that I've used these supplies. You guys may get different results based on the paper you use, the way you layer, etc. So I really suggest that you give this a try for yourself as it's such a fun exercise and you really get to understand your supplies. 
You can even refer back to a sheet like this when selecting certain methods to use within a piece, so it's a really handy exercise to complete. Next week I will be showcasing six different dry blending methods, so make sure you stick around and hit that sub button so you don't miss that. If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up with that button below, and if you are new around here and you thought this video was extra super duper, then go right ahead and click that subscribe button. Maybe even tick that bell icon too while you're at it. I upload new videos every single Friday and I live stream most Sundays too, which is always a hoot and it's great if you want to watch some live drawing and get involved with the growing community here. We would love to have you. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye!